let's have a run through problem eight three a disposing of a depreciable asset at a gain or loss when it comes to midterm exams midterm two of my class uh I love asking problems like this, often using straight line depreciation as we do in this question, but also units of production, double declining balance as we will do in problem A4. But the reason I like it is because it tests students on can they do depreciation journal entries, which we will do here. And it also tests them on like, can they, what happens when they sell an asset and get more money than they were planning for or less? Uh, how does that work? And so that's what we look at in problem eight three. It's a, it's a great type of problem. Highly recommend you practice these bills. Towing purchased a new tow truck on April 1st, 2029 for $110,000 cash. The company expects to keep the tow truck for 10 years, after which time it expects to sell the truck for $10,000. That's, of course, the residual value, salvage value in other uh, terms. Uh, the company's accountant wishes to use straight line depreciation. Bill's towing has a fiscal year end of December 31st. On October 1st, 2030, now we thought we were going to have the truck for 10 years. Turns out we had it for like a year and a half. October 1st, 2030, Bill sells the truck for 106 grand. So we don't know what's in Bill's mind. Maybe just didn't like the truck or whatever. Changed the industries, right? He was just like, I got to get out of this truck and sells it for $106,000. It says record all journal entries for the life of the truck. So let's start with buying the truck. That's fairly straightforward. April 1st, April Fool's Day, 2029, Bill buys a truck for cash. So we're going to debit truck. You could debit equipment or vehicle here. I'm going to call a truck a truck, $110,000, and we credit cash for $110,000. Now, in all likelihood, if Bill owns lots of trucks, maybe it would be like this is the Freightliner model XYZ, right? Like some detail about the truck that, uh, you know, a Mack truck or whatever type of truck and some detail around that. Um, okay, but that's April 1st, 2029. We bought a truck for $110,000 cash. Uh, what is our next relevant date? And the next relevant date is our fiscal year end. Now, even though nothing happens, right? We don't sell the truck. We're just driving it around. Uh, on December 30th, 31st, we need to do a journal entry. And what do we need to do? Well, I hope you're guessing or saying depreciation. This truck is not worth 110. It will have dropped in value. We got to figure out how much. So again, the cost of our truck is 110. The residual value is 10. So the depreciable cost is only 100,000. That's the number we use to drive our calculations. Again, cost minus residual value equals depreciable cost. <laughs> so our depreciable cost is 100 and we're going to depreciate it over 10 years. So works out to a nice clean $10,000 per year in depreciation. So you know somebody made up the numbers because they work out evenly in real life numbers never work out evenly like this. Uh, so it's $10,000 in depreciation per year. And between April and December, it's not a full year. It's uh Let's count months, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. I got nine, nine months. So nine twelfths of a year. So $10,000 times nine twelfths, that's 7,500, 75%. So the journal entry for depreciation, always the same journal entry, what we learned back in chapter three. I hope you remember it. Debit depreciation expense, 7,500. And we credit accumulated depreciation truck or whatever the asset is, uh, 7,500. Okay. So this wasn't asked for, but it would be something you would have to deliver. You'd make financial statements and on your financial statements, you'd say what the truck is worth according to the accountant, the book value of the truck. So according to our books, this truck was worth 110 when we bought it. It has accumulated depreciation of 7,500. Truck minus AD truck equals truck net. And we call that the net book value of the truck, 
102,500. So according to the accountant, the accountant thinks this truck is worth 102,500. What is it really worth? We have no idea. But the accountant just in their office somewhere thinks it's worth 1025. They're not looking at the truck. They're not kicking the tires. They're just, you know, making a guess saying, well, the truck's going to last 10 years. We guess it went down by 7,500 over these nine months. Okay. Uh, so now what up? What's the next relevant date? The next relevant date is October 1st, 2030. And what do we have to do on October 31st or October 1st, rather, 2030? We got to sell the truck. But before we can sell the truck, you have to depreciate the asset up to the date of the sale. So we have to say, okay, it's another depreciation, which means we're going to be counting months. How many months between December 31st and October 1st? Is it nine again? Oh, that's lame. Uh, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. Oh, we don't count October because it's October 1st. Nine months. Yeah, it's nine months again. Uh, so that's nine twelfths of a year. And so it's the same math, right? It's $10,000 depreciation per year. We've got nine months to do 10,000 times nine twelfths is $7,500 more in depreciation. So journal entry is actually exactly the same debit depreciation expense, credit accumulated depreciation truck for 7,500 bucks. And let's just update our uh, assessment of what this truck is worth. So we had a truck that we bought for uh, $110,000. We have depreciated this truck for in total. Now that's what accumulated depreciation is 15,000, right? 7,500 last year during that nine month period and 7,500 this year during the nine month period. And so we think the accountant sitting in an office somewhere thinks this truck should be worth around $95,000. Now, Bill turns around and sells the truck for $106,000 cash today. Does this mean he got a good deal or a bad deal? The answer is we don't know, right? Maybe the cost or the value of these used trucks has gone up for some weird reason, and he really should have got hundred and twenty grand for it. We don't know that, but we just know that he got paid more than the accountant in their accounting office thinks the truck ought to be worth. The accountant thinks it ought to be ninety five. dollars Bill got paid hundred and six grand. He got paid $11,000 more than the book value of the truck, this represents now there's two options when you dispose of an asset. You're gonna sell it at a gain or at a loss. If you got paid more than the account thought it was worth, it's a gain. If you got paid less, it's a loss. And you'll never get paid exactly what the account thought it was worth. But if that happened, then there's no gain or no loss. There's nothing. Um, but of course, in these questions and in real life, there's always gonna be a gain or loss. Maybe a small one, but there will always be one. Okay, so let's do the journal entry. You debit cash, because cash changed hands. We got, was $106,000. You get rid of the asset. So you got to get rid of the truck, credit truck, for 110. This is the place people go wrong. They credit truck net, 95. No, no, no. You got to get rid of the whole truck, 110. And you got to get rid of the AD truck in a separate step. So to get rid of the truck, it was a debit account. You credit it to make it go to zero. To get rid of AD, something we haven't gotten rid of so far, you debit it, right? We credit AD to when we have depreciation, debit AD when you're getting rid of that asset and, and it's related accumulated depreciation. You're getting this truck and all the accumulated depreciation off the books, 15,000 in total. And what you find is it doesn't balance, right? We took the cash in, we got rid of the truck and it's accumulated depreciation. And this thing has 121,000 of debits, 110,000 of credits. We're off by 11,000 of credits. That 11,000 is just this difference, 106 to 95, it's $11,000. It's a credit that we need to fill in here. This credit is to an account we call gain on sale. And just to let you know what a gain on sale is, it's a revenue account. It is other revenue. It's not considered part of the day-to-day -day business. If you run a tow truck company, you're not buying and selling tow trucks. A tow truck retailer would consider this something different. But for us, just selling an asset that we are planning to use to do our work, which you don't do every day, it's not an operating revenue or operating expense. It is other in the financial statements. Okay, um, that's it. We have solved part A. I'll erase that and 
we've done a, a beautiful job if I do say so myself. Let's look on to part B. Part B says, assume that instead of 106, Bill got 75, Bill had received $75,000 for the truck. Re-record the sale journal entry given this new sales price. So all the other stuff is the same. The only difference is right here, instead of 106 cash, we got, what was it, 75,000. So it's saying change this number to 75,000. And just eyeballing this, right? If we change this to 75,000, we still think it's a $95,000 truck, right? Everything up to now has been the same. We get paid 75,000. Well, we got paid less than the accountant thought the truck was worth. That is representing a loss on sale as you will soon see. So let's do it all. So again, this was uh, the question as asked. This was part A. I'll do part B just beside it. So October 1st, Oh, I want to do it right beside. These two are in the way. Maybe I'll delete them. Okay. So October 1st, 2030, debit cash. And we only got paid 75000 We get rid of our truck, 110. We get rid of our accumulated depreciation on the truck, which was 15000 in total. And we do the same thing we did before. We total it up. We go, okay, I got 90,000 in debits. I got 110 in credits. My debits don't equal my credits. I'm off by $20,000 and, and I need 20,000 more on the debit side to make this balance. And we debit loss on sale. It can be called loss on disposal also. And now we got 110 in debits, 110 in credits. So this thing balances this was part b and just to reiterate what's going on here with this loss on sale account it is an other expense it's a uh it's an expense but it's not considered an operating expense but there you go we've solved the problem i i as always hope these videos are helping and if they're helping you i hope you will help me thanks for watching see you in the next one bye bye the next video in our series is right up here, and if you want a supercut of all of the videos in this series, that's the one down below.